Hello everyone, my name is Ade and I have two kids. The oldest one, his name is Raphael and he's now in year three. So what happens is he sometimes comes to me and brings uh, his homework, mathematics homework, and then he asks me how to solve the question from the homework. And, and many times the question from his homework are very interesting. And one of them, one of them, one of the question is like this. So you are given two numbers and they differ by 54. And they are composed of the same two digits reverse find the number so let me write for you so we have we have two numbers differ by 54 and they are composed of the same two digits reverse and the question is find the numbers well i think this question is quite interesting and the motivation of this question for those kids actually the teacher would like to encourage those kids to explore, to explore the numbers. But um, again, you can solve this question by doing some trials and then see if the number will match with, uh, you know, this 54 here. <clears throat> now the question is, is there any systematic way to do it? Um, in, in the original question, actually, they are given this uh, figure so the, the first number for example it's a triangle and square that means if you reverse them now it becomes square comes first and then the triangle okay and when you subtract them you got 54 so basically that's the question now the question is what are they okay um, and like I said to you before, we can always do some trials to see uh, if, if we can get the right number. But um, what I try to explain to him, since he already learned about something called place value, so hopefully by using this knowledge, um, we can solve this question more systematically now i will start with something that he knows for example if he has two digits number say 23 and then he knows that this is just two times 10 plus three times one right <clears throat> or if he has say 45 this is also the same 4 times 10 plus 5 times 1. So you know, this is the 10, yeah, 2 and 4, and then 3 and 5 here, they are the 1s. <coughs> now, if you look at the first number here, triangle, and the square that means what we have here is a triangle times 10 plus a square times 1 and then the second number here square and triangle it will be um, square times 10 plus a triangle times one. 
<coughs> now what happens here is actually we subtract them right so we subtract these two numbers and if you have this so let's do the subtraction and normally in the um, future learning instead of using the symbol triangle or square they will use some letters for example a b or x or y right but um, let's not worry about those letters at the moment so in this case if you have 10 triangle uh, you subtract by one triangle what you will have is now you have nine triangles so we have triangle times nine and then now be careful with this one because he already learned about negative number he knows when you have only one square you subtract by 10 square what you will have is you will have negative nine square so this is what you will have actually when you subtract this you know 10 triangles subtracted by one triangle and then you have now um, one square subtracted by 10 squares you will have nine triangles and then minus nine square right so what i found interesting when he asked me about a question from his homework is that i can actually introduce him something important something very new to him so in this case um you know i show him you know if you have this number multiplied by nine and then also you have another number multiplied by nine so basically what you have here is you can take that nine out so nine and then you multiply by now you have the um triangle and then you keep this sign here minus like that so according to the question before the difference between those two numbers it is 54. that means if we have now nine times something equal to 54 nine times this was in the bracket equals to 54 that means what's in the bracket here the triangle minus the square equals to 54 divided by 9 which is equal to 6. so now what i ask him is okay so you have two numbers here you call it square and also uh, triangle and square and then when you subtract them you have the the answer is six so where are they and then i start to make him a table so i start to make him a table <clears throat> so here's the triangles and then this is the square now let's start with for example if the triangle is nine now what is nine minus something so that you will have six and now he can answer it easily the square has to be three in this case so if this is the number now let's check if you got the right thing so for example now we have 93 and then when you swap them you have 39 what is the difference now okay so what we have here it's 54 so the first answer here it's nine and three and now i bring him with the the other uh, possibilities so for example if the value of the triangle is eight so what is eight eight minus something equals to six and he can answer this easily this is uh, equal to two yeah okay so let's check this again if you have 82 and then you swap them you subtract by 28 what do we get okay so we get um yeah again 54 that's good and then of course he can do the the others here for example seven and then one yeah so basically 71 minus 17 and you will get also 54 and lastly <coughs> six and zero because if you have 60 subtracted by six yeah you will also have 54. well at this point actually we already answer that question so we have some possibilities and and the numbers are you know 93 39 82 28 71 and and 60. but actually from from this question this is a very good starting point if you want to introduce him something so-called linear equation 
So <clears throat> actually, when we have two things here, for example, you have, you know, the uh, triangle minus square, yeah, equals to six. <clears throat> and like I mentioned before, in the future, instead of writing as this uh, geometrical figure like triangle or square, we will use now uh, letters. Yeah, and and usually this is something that commonly many people use the the letter that we are going to use. For example, we are going to use X and then Y, yeah, and some other letters. So we can also write down now the equation as X minus Y equals to six. So this is an example of something so-called linear equation. Now the question is why why this is called linear equation? Okay, well, of course, the first thing is quite obvious. It is an equation because there is a equal sign here. That's why it's called equation. But the next question is why it's called linear? Why it's called linear? Right. Now, if you remember, when, when we try to get the values of the triangle and the square here, I'm using a table, yeah? and actually, now you can erase this and then change them into, you know, the value of x and y values here. Now, um, you know, in the past, yeah, like maybe 400 years ago, there was a person named Descartes. So he, is, he was mathematician and also a philosopher. And he proposed a genius way, a smart way to visualize your equation into something that you can uh, geometrically understand. So he he actually invented something so called the um, Cartesian diagram. So the idea of Cartesian diagram basically you will have number lines here yeah? in this case because you have two values x and y you will have uh, two number lines and they are perpendicular one another. So the horizontal one, you can call it the X axis, and then the vertical one, you call it the Y axis. Now, if you remember how we draw the number line, there are some values in there. So the one in the middle here, the intersection of X and Y axis, we call it as the origin. And the point there, it's zero, zero. So it's where the X value equal to zero and then Y value equal to zero. Now the right side of the origin is the positive value of X. So for example, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. And then the left side of the origin is the negative value of X. So this is minus one, minus two, minus three, <coughs> minus four, and so on. Now, above the origin, that's the positive value of y. So this is one, two, three, and so on. And then the below, below origin is the negative value of y. So it's minus one, minus two, minus three, and so on. Yeah, now um, you see, when we got those values before, yeah, 9, 3, 8, 2, 7, 1, 6, 0, what happened is you can put them on the uh, Cartesian diagram that we draw here. So, 9, 3, where is it? Where is this point located? So, this is where the um, 
x value equal to nine and then the y value equal to three or or normally we will write using a bracket like this so nine comma three so in this case the point where x equal to nine and y equals to three will be okay so let me um So here is seven, eight, nine for x values, and then this is one, two, three. So when x is three and then y equals to three, this is the first point. Yeah, nine and three. Now, when the x value equals to eight and then the y value equals to two, so the coordinate, the coordinate of this point, it's a comma two. So where is that? That will be um so this x is equal to eight and then the value of y is two there. <clears throat> and then next when x equal to seven y equals to one therefore the point is located here and last one when x equal to six y equals to zero is there so now when you see when we connect all of this point okay this drawing is not very ideal actually because i'm drawing it by hand but um if you if you draw it very well yeah, you can see that when you connect them you will get a straight line so there is the reason why it's called linear because when you plot the values of x and y that satisfy this equation and then what you will see is a start a straight line like this one and and any graph that gives you um, a straight line like this yeah it's called linear right so now I'm going to talk more about linear equation. Okay, so you know when when you say um, have linear equation like before, yeah. Normally, um, the um, general form yeah, of a linear equation is written as y equal to a value multiplied by dx and then plus a constant. So this is very famous general form of a linear equation y equals to a value times x which we call it m yeah and then plus a constant now um i just want to convert from this so basically the equation that we had before into the general equation that we had here so basically in order to make this general form you have to separate y so we just want to have y a single y in one side the way we do it it's simple so if you see here so you can basically move this minus y to the right hand side so you have y here and then you can move that number six to the um, left hand side so you will have now you know x minus six there right so basically now you have this equation from the original one and and this is also the same if you write like this y equals to x minus six now you can see here the equation that you have now is an equation similar like this general form yeah y equals to m times x plus c and and in this case if you want to see the value of m and the value of c you can look at now 
what do you multiply with the x value here? Because we only have an x here, that means it's multiplied by one, right? Therefore, this value of m that you multiply with x here is equal to one. And then the value of a constant in your equation here is simply that number minus six, okay? So, <clears throat> you know, normally, if you have a linear equation, you can change it into this general form because this form is more informative. It's more informative, yeah? Because if you look at these values, for example, the uh, m value, this m is called the, the gradient or sometimes some people call it also the slope, yeah? And then that constant c, it is called the uh, y-axis intercept. Y-axis intercept. <clears throat> okay, in, in the uh, previous example, we have seen before that um, if you look at the graph yeah if you look at the graph what happened was um actually the equation x minus y equals to six or now you wrote as y equals to x minus six yeah the um x intercept of this graph will be the, the y intercept of this graph will be um located at minus six yeah Um, you know, actually, when you try to plot a graph, yeah, like this one, the simplest one, when you have a linear equation, or even when you have more complicated equation, you can always use some website. Okay, so for example, I'm going to show you a, a website that I normally use. So it's called Desmos. And, and you see, when you go to the internet, you can just click Desmos. And then, okay, I'll show you. Desmos. Yeah. And then graphing the calculator. So this is an uh, amazing website. And then you can now write down the equation that you have. In that case, we have y equals to x minus six. Yeah, there we go. So you see, we have this um, graph now, and and what happened is actually when you look at the the intercept point of your straight line and the uh, y axis here, it's located at zero comma minus six. That's where you have the uh, y intercept. Yeah. So again, this website is very amazing website that you can or we will use very often in the future. Okay. Now, there's another point that you see here. It's called the um, x-intercept. So what happens here is with the x-intercept, of course, the value of that point, the value of y of that point is equal to zero. That's why the coordinate here is zero comma six comma zero. Yeah, right. <clears throat> now, um, so normally when you have a linear equation and then you want to plot, you want to plot um, the, the graph of it, yeah? Okay, so what you will see is a straight line, right? And, and to plot a straight line, yeah? To plot a straight line, what you will need is we will need at least two points. Right, so basically, um, if you learn the idea of, of two dimensional. geometry 
the idea is when you have two points you can connect them with a straight line yeah and and then you know when you have say three points yeah instead of having a line you will have a flat plane now so um we'll not talk about the uh plane at the moment because when you go you know in the future when we study in the future we will arrive to this discussion about the flat plane but at the moment i'm just uh, showing you when you have two points you can connect them with a straight line that's why now if you want to plot a straight line here yeah, we will need at least two points so let me give you an example from what we have before you know normally when you have a a an equation yeah like a linear equation so we have something like this before y equals to x minus six um now you want to plot the graph of it right so what you need to have is you need to have at least two points and and basically what we will recommend you you will need to get the um, y intercept and uh, x intercept simple so the the y intercept basically it will be obtained when the x value of that point equal to zero so this is not difficult to find the y intercept you just set this number equal to zero so basically the y intercept will just be y equal to minus six that's why that number like i show you before that number that constant is called the y intercept and the location of that is somewhere here that is your y intercept now the x intercept it's when when the value of y now the value of y equal to zero so basically with this point you just set this number y now it, it is equal to zero so zero equals to x minus six and then you solve this equation for x that's you get x equal to six and there we go so like i told you before if you have now two points yeah you can connect them and then basically you will get a straight line right okay so this is very simple idea about the um, linear equation yeah again why it's called linear equation because the graph of it is just simply straight line right um now the next thing that i want to discuss with you is say you have two points you have two points on the uh, cartesian plane yeah you have two points on the uh, xy plane or we call it cartesian plane the question is how can you set up your equation how can you set up your linear equation from those two points so so for example you have now um an arbitrary point okay i think i'll, I'll try to make um the coordinate using this one uh, it looks nicer actually and then you have two points for example the first one is located at um, okay so you know this is the number one two three four five six seven eight yeah right this is one two three and then four now if you have for example the the first point somewhere here it's located at this coordinate so let me call it point a and the coordinate of that is eight comma four and then um for example the um next point it's located somewhere here yeah and let's just call it point b okay now you know as i told you before once you have two points you can connect them with a straight line yeah now how do we get the equation of this straight line so find 
the equation of straight line right now let's go back to the general equation that we had before so it was y equals to the slope times dx plus c right actually to find the equation of straight line yeah there are so many ways to do it there are so many ways yeah and and the one that i'm showing you now is just one of them and that's the simplest one okay now you see again when you look at the equation of the straight line there are two important information that you have here the first one is the value of m or the slope and the second one is the value of the y intercept yeah okay so the first method to get this equation is by finding these values so the slope and also the y intercept yeah um now let me discuss with you more detail about what slope is so the slope of a straight line is just actually the ratio between two things that you call it rise and run so ratio it's simply rise on run rise divided by run so that's the calculation how you calculate the slope of a straight line okay now how do we get the values of rise and the values of run from from this straight line okay so if you look at this straight line it passes to points a and b here and then what happened is you can now you can you know draw you can draw a a right triangle right triangle like this see yeah this is a right triangle meaning that this angle here is 90 degrees so now you see here when you have this right triangle this vertical line here it's called the rise okay it's called the rise and then this horizontal side here is called the run yeah and now the values of rise and run here you can see from from this number so for example if you go vertically the value of the rise will be from this two to four so that means uh, that's the rise value four subtracted by two right and the value of the run here you are now running from four to eight so that means the run here is just eight minus four okay that gives us um two divided by four or half yeah so basically the slope is simply rise on run or you can always calculate like this the value of y say a minus y b so that is from this minus this remember y of a this is y of a and subtracted by y of b divided by the um run which is the x value of a minus the x value of b that's it so that's the slope yeah y a minus y b divided by x a minus x b now once you got the value of the slope yeah we can plug in that number into the general equation that you have here so y equals to m times x plus c remember and you got the uh, value of the slope here now which is half all right and like i said before the next thing that you want to get from uh you know this method is this value y intercept so the thing is how we get this number now right so to get this value of c basically what you will do is you need to use one of them either you use the uh, coordinate of a or coordinate of b and then plug in those number into your equation here so for example the value of um x of b here is four and then the y value of b here is two okay so let's just put those number now here the y value of that is two here and then equals to half times the value of x which is four plus c there we go so if you solve this equation now you can get the value 
of C, right? And and this becomes two, two equals to two plus C. In this case, well, it is equal to zero. So sometimes you can have also this situation where you get the intercept equal to zero. That means actually what happens is your graph will be passing through the origin here. Yeah. So once you got this C equal to zero, now you can plug them into your general equation y equals to um, half times x plus zero or simply write y equals to half x that's it so i guess you need to learn you need to get some practices yeah how to get the equation of linear equation and also um you need to practice when you want to plot them on the uh, Cartesian plane. Yeah? This is just the beginning. And in the future, we will learn more detail yeah, about the equation and also what can you do with it. Yeah? OK, um, I think that's the first lesson. Yeah? This is just an introduction. See, the thing is, in, in the past, I actually taught physics. And, and what happens is when you want to study this subject like physics, um, the, the challenge is, that of course, one of the challenges is the language that it uses is mathematics. And, and I found that many students, they were struggling with the subject with physics when they learn the subject because they are quite weak with their mathematics skill, yeah? That's why um, in this opportunity now, I'd like to build the uh, mathematics background if you wanna learn uh, you know, physics in the future. And at the same time, you know, I wanna show you some other stuff, interesting stuff also with, with mathematics. So hopefully in the, this channel, you can um, learn something very useful for your study in the future, right? So I'll, I'll see you next time. Thank you.